conveniente la recomendatoria porque es la que va a suplementar el seguro social de este país. Bueno, eso ya sería otro asunto. Lo que queremos en este momento resaltar que la comunidad sigue en su búsqueda, que sigue en su anhelo y de alguna manera nosotros representamos esas esperanzas. The Union Station is the most important probably have it but still it's not here. Oh then I don't know. I was I just picked up this tripod. I don't know what it is. <laughs> okay. I was like hey, buddy, can you take care of this and then like I don't know where she is. Oh you don't know where she is? I don't oh, know where she is. The camera is not there. She probably is carrying it with herself.
Unsu went for her. Unsu went to get her. I'm the executive director of Soul Speaking Our Lives. And we're here today to uh, launch uh, or to welcome the Northern California Dreamers in our national journey across America. 
Me llamo Javier González, soy el director ejecutivo de la organización SOL y estamos aquí hoy para recibir a nuestros compañeros del norte de California, lo, quienes estamos llamando los soñadores que se están entregando a nuestro viaje a través de América a, a Washington. Um, You know, the kind of the goal of what we're trying to accomplish here today is to begin to have a rational and reasonable conversation with America about immigration. And our goal here is to sort of take the crazies on both sides of the argument, put them outside the door, and begin to have a conversation about what it is to be an American, what it is to leave a place that isn't working so well, and to look for a better life somewhere. And what we think we have is a journey across the country that brings together different stories, different people with diverse backgrounds. It kind of symbolizes what's going on in the debate. And our main focus here is to humanize the story, to tell the story of the immigrants and the non-immigrants, people that are affected by immigration, and to hear their story and to learn a little bit from each other and to learn about their hopes and their dreams and their aspirations. More importantly, we're asking people to share their stories and share their dreams and share their aspirations and join the train online at dreamsacrossamericaonline.org and to tell their story and to begin to discuss, uh, whether it be on the internet, through the lives of people, the sharing of each other's dreams in a way that's fruitful, constructive, and a conversation that talks to all these folks in America that have basically been lied to and misled by their leaders for political purposes about what it is that is happening in America with regard to this immigration debate. So we think that instead of talking about laws and amendments and bills and propositions, we should be talking about our hopes and our dreams and our aspirations and what's government's role in making sure that we have all the opportunity to fulfill our hopes and our dreams. So what we're going to meet today is a diverse set of folks that are joining us in this journey across America that's traveling. Um, I think our train is going to Tucson, to San Antonio, to Chicago, through Ohio, Indiana, Pennsylvania, and then on to Washington. And what we hope to do is get to Washington and kind of just take our finger at these folks and say, you guys got to figure something out because there's hopes and dreams across the country and across the world. They're depending on our leaders in Washington to do something. And instead of thinking about it about crimes and laws, we should think about it about the lives of everyday people and their struggles to both uh, work hard, raise a family, go to school, run a business, and to fulfill what everybody wants, which is a nice, happy future for them and their family. So I'm gonna put, uh, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna introduce uh, our stereotypical immigrant, um, <laughs> Roxana Tynan, who's going to share with us why she's helping out and what her story is as an immigrant. Hi, uh, my name is Roxana Tynan, this is my daughter Isabel, and I'm an immigrant from England. I came here when I was 10 years old in 1976, and um, I was asked to share what was for me the scariest four days of my life. Um, when I was about 24, I had been here legally. I had a work visa. Um, but apparently I made a mistake in my papers, a mistake I was innocent of. I didn't understand all the technicalities of the law because it could be so complicated to uh, navigate your way through immigration law. I thought I was legal, but apparently I wasn't. I left the country to visit my mom in England who was very sick. And when I came back, my papers were not in order. Um, and apparently they'd been out of order for, I don't know, three or four months. So when I came in, the immigration stopped me, they interviewed me, they told me that I was a criminal and that I had a choice, that I could either get sent back to England or I could go to jail. And I had nothing back in England. My, uh, my mom at that point was dying and my whole life was in this country. I lived here since I was 10. I grew up watching the love boats, Fantasy Island. I mean, I, England doesn't make sense to me. So I chose to go to jail and I spent four days in Turtle Island with a lot of other very depressed women who were facing futures even worse than mine. And I was lucky. I was able then to be um, paroled into this country and over the course of about 10 years uh, was able finally to become a citizen. But in those four days, I really felt my whole life flat before me. I had taken being an American for granted because I've lived here since I was 10 and everything I knew was American. And the idea of losing that was like losing my life, losing um, all my hopes and dreams for the future. 
so I feel very, very lucky to be here today with my daughter and know that nobody, no immigration official ever will be able to threaten her uh, with being taken away from the place that she knows is home and the place that I've known as home since I was 10. So, um, although I'm well, luckily not going to be able to be on the train, I want to encourage you to participate in this. Immigrants come in every color and stripe, and I'm certainly proof of that. My dreams are as caught up in living in this country and being an American, and I cannot imagine any other future for myself or for my family. Uh, no different from your dreams. Oh, Here in the United States, States, I no longer live in fear. In my native uh, country, Burma, I, I was somewhere. I was at Bay College. Through my study, I hope uh, I'm going to get this job. But my country was not like here. We were run by military leadership. We did not know the freedom. Uh, only quite a Saturday, I would relax at home on my sofa and watching television. Then I would hear, it may not sound like walkie-talkie, I would jump to attention and then scurry to open the window in case the official, uh, I have to run for my life. I fear, I fear, uh, I fear to the official, we are coming to arrest me. It is a big day life in my country. Uh, we had arrest and uh, my, my best friend of mine in the dead of the night. He was not here from the day. We had done nothing more than together walk to gain for our country. 
what America enjoys so much, freedom and democracy. I had no choice but to leave. I began a new life in Thailand as a great junior heavy base in Israel. I left school and my parents behind. I became a seafarer and I wanted to see the war that my country's dictator would not allow me to see. But I was still not as it should be. I was not at home. My new country did not embrace me. So I did, however, meet my wife there. We had a son. And we then came here to California. I wanted to protect my son. I wanted him to have the opportunity of a college education. I came for the promise of tomorrow. We have sacrificed much. My mother has struggled with cancer. I cannot go back to my country and I cannot afford to bring her and dad here. <웃음> 낮 시간이니까 다른 분들이 오기가 좀 힘들죠. <웃음> 이스라엘에서 we have our own challenges here in the city of Los Angeles. We're after a very peaceful march. We had an incident with our police officer. Our people, our neighbors to the south are wondering, how do we treat immigrants who are human, families who are here to work hard and distribute to the society if in fact we do not treat them correctly? So I want to welcome the Dreamers from Northern California. I want to give them and, let, and tell them well wishes as they move forward bring attention to this very important matter. I also say it's timely because we're very concerned that without a federal immigration policy that is comprehensive, we will continue to see local jurisdictions take immigration matters into their own hands. And what we're seeing right now is not good for any of us. It's not good for immigrants and it's not good for people who live in these local communities. We will continue to see local immigration policies passed by local city council members that are not good for immigrants or their local residents. We need comprehensive immigration reform now. I was born in Zacatecas, Mexico. I'm very proud of that. Very proud to be the first Latino immigrant elected to city council. But I was only able to do this because of the walking arms that this country had for my father. You see, my father was a placero. He came to this country when this country asked him for his help. They needed help with his labor. He came, he sweated throughout the fields of the southwest, picking onions, tomatoes, beans, anything that this country asked him to help out with. He even went to our factories to help build and provide things that our country needed to make to be able to survive throughout the 50s or 60s. And this country welcomed him with open arms. And there was one big significant difference between now and then. <coughs> they allowed him to unify his family. When he decided to stay here in the United States, he called upon his family. We were united. We were reunified. We do not see that in any of the proposals that we propose today in Congress. 
And that's why when we propose a, reform, a comprehensive reform immigration policy, one of our priorities is to see that we have reunification of families, which is so critical to allowing our immigrants to live and achieve the American dream, to achieve the dream that many of the people here want to see. Finally, as we move forward, I also hope that we continue to see a sound reform package that includes an aspect that a path to U.S. citizenship and reduces immigration backlogs and that we won't have to ask our immigrants to wait years and years and years and penalize them when they are asked to become residents. We need to shorten the backlog in our immigration departments. We also have to make sure that we allow our children to achieve the American dream by giving them financial access to be able to go on to college. It's not just that today, when many of our kids play by the rules, get good grades, become valedictorians, and then we do not allow them to go to the college of their choice because they do not have financial access, they do not qualify for the loans because of the documentation. We need to make sure that the Dream Act passes as well. We want to make sure that our immigrants just like many immigrants before, my father and many more that came before him, have the same opportunities to succeed. The playing field's not even, and we want to make sure that America continues to stand and abide by what it represents. Equality, opportunity, and freedom. Thank you very much.